Joe Iron at the University of North Carolina Clinical Trials Unit. Great. So Joe, thanks for being with us today. New recommendations from the Department of Health and Human Services guidelines right. panel yep. today. Now it's November 1st, 2013, so just a couple of days ago. Can you tell us about it and what you think? Yeah, I think the, the guidelines were actually very specific. They're, they're kind of updated for what are the optimal preferred treatments for initiating therapy in HIV. And over the last year, we've really got a ton of information about how to use integrase inhibitors. And the guidelines are incredibly timely, and they've been updated to kind of take into account that information. And, and basically, number one, the third fixed-dose combination, which is L-vitegravir, cobacistat, tenofovir, and emtricitabine, stribild, one pill once a day, integrase inhibitor-based therapy, is now a preferred regimen. And I think that's right where it should be. Um, it is a, a medication now in two large studies, has three years of data showing um, uh, consistent, strong activity with actually very few uh, side effects, um, certainly very similar to our standard efavirin, tenofovir, emtricitabine, and adazanavir, tenofovir, emtricitabine. So I think this is uh, uh, exactly where it should be. There is a, a little asterisk that, of course, in people that have uh, uh, abnormal renal function, this isn't a therapy for them. So if their creatinine clearance is less than seven, uh, less than 70, then we won't, we don't use that therapy. And then the second integrase added, and the third now in the guidelines, is dalutegravir. Um, dalutegravir um, is the most recently approved drug, just approved in August of this year, but there are a lot of clinical data. There's a comparison to raltegravir, there's a comparison to efavirenz, and most recently there's a comparison to darunavir ritonavir. So basically compared to almost all the other preferred regimens, um, and essentially, in those studies, dalutegravir was either um, as good as or superior to um, those other preferred regimens. So I think appropriately it was added to the guidelines. And the thing about dalutegravir is that it's flexible. It can go both ways. It actually can be combined with either uh, a bacavir 3 tc So in a, in a sense, a bacavir 3 tc has been kind of elevated to a preferred mm -hmm. regimen. Mm -hmm. Uh, in combination with dalutegravir, and then also can combine with tenofovir and FTC. Um, the caveat, of course, with the back of your 3TC is you have to um, uh, test for HLA B5701 um, to make sure the patient isn't at risk for hypersensitivity. So I think what we now have is we really have an array of um, uh, terrific initial therapies from which we can choose. Um, with the integrase inhibitors, we can really select based on tolerability, based on drug-drug interactions, based on people that want a single pill. And we still have our kind of old reliables, efavirenz, adazanavir, ritonavir, raltegravir, and darunavir, ritonavir. So I think the guidelines are remarkably timely, and I think right on target. Yeah, and don't you think it's remarkable that we went from four drugs now to, I'm sorry, four regimens to eight regimens? And more than half now are integrase. Well, yeah, yeah. I think I, integrase <laughs> inhibitor. I, I, well, there's a reason for that. Yeah. Um, I think if you look carefully at all the integrase inhibitor studies, even though most of them show non inferiority, numerically the integrase inhibitor is almost always slightly better. Yeah. And in each of the studies, um, if you look at uh, raltegravir twice daily, raltegravir, mm -hmm. to remember that, twice daily, yeah. uh, uh, L-vitegravir or dalutegravir, it's usually 88 to 90 percent suppressed mm -hmm. at, at 48 weeks. So it's mm -hmm. really very, very effective mm -hmm. regimens. And the proportion of patients that actually stop therapy because of kind of virologic failure is very mm -hmm. small. In the study that compared dalutegravir to raltegravir at two years, only 2% of patients actually discontinued due to adverse effects. Mm. So that means, you know, 98%, you know, were able to continue their therapy um, uh, uh, or, or at the very least uh, didn't have a, a serious enough toxicity to have right. to stop therapy. So I think they're very well tolerated regimens. They're now we have convenient regimens. Mm -hmm. We have boosted and unboosted mm -hmm. integrase. So I think it's really um, kind of a very exciting time. And it, it's good for patients. It gives them lots of opportunities. I, as a promotional plug, I'd like to say that, that UNC has participated in virtually almost all the studies that have mm -hmm. led to the um, uh, uh, 
I guess, promotion or, or expansion of the preferred guidelines to include these integrase inhibitors. We've certainly studied Strybild. We've studied Dolutegra very extensively. And, of course, we were among the uh, many, many sites that worked on Raltegravir. So I think it's, it's exciting news. Great. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you.